Hey everyone, welcome back to Bible Q&A. In this video, we've got an important question to answer today. And that question is, did Jesus get a fair trial? The Passion of Jesus Christ is one of the most well-known and important events in Christian history and of incredible spiritual significance to Christians worldwide. As the four Gospels tell us, Jesus was betrayed by his own disciple, Judas Iscariot, and brought before the Jewish council and Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. Jesus was accused of blaspheming the name of God by claiming to be God's son and of inciting disobedience against Caesar, according to John chapter 19, verse 7 and Luke chapter 23, verse 2. At the end of the day, he was hanged beside two criminals. How was Jesus convicted of a crime we all know he did not commit? Was this trial a fair one or not? I'll proceed to highlight three important details about the trial process that give us the answer to that question. The first has to do with the witnesses who testified against Jesus. If we read Matthew chapter 26 verses 59 to 61, we'll see that the Pharisees gathered false witnesses to accuse Jesus. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. False witness, of course, is against the laws of God. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's one of the Ten Commandments, according to Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. By Mosaic law, the testimony of false witnesses is supposed to be diligently examined by righteous judges, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verses 15 to 19. But because the Pharisees formed the council or Sahedrin, that was by past, and it was used to lie against Jesus. This is not the only time we see this in the Bible. In 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 8 to 13, Jezebel used false witnesses to accuse Naboth of committing blasphemy against God and the king, which in Israel was worthy of death. He never committed this crime, of course, but he was stoned to death anyways. Another big example is in Acts chapter 6, verse 13, where Stephen, an anointed man of God, was accused by false witnesses of speaking blasphemous words against the laws of God. He too was stoned to death. Another factor is that Pontius Pilate, the judge of this case, was not objective or impartial in his judgment. He knew that Jesus Christ was innocent, as he told the Jews multiple times that he found no fault in Jesus worthy of death. However, if we read Mark chapter 15 verse 15, we'll see that Pilate released Barabbas and ordered that Christ be crucified so that he could please the Jews and prevent them from reveling. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas onto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. You can also read John chapter 19 verses 1 to 16, which shows that Pilate feared what the Jews would do and so consented to punish an innocent man. However, the Bible's point of view is that a judge must be impartial in judgment. When the Israelites were to settle in Canaan, Moses emphasized this. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. That's Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 17. This stems from the fact that God is a judge, according to Psalm 50, verse 6, and is impartial. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. That's Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. And Apostle Paul added, For there is no respect of persons with God. According to Romans chapter 2, verse 11. We can contrast Pontius Pilate's actions with the way King Agrippa handled St. Paul in Acts chapter 26. Rather than having preconceived notions about Paul, he listened to him objectively and was able to identify based on his understanding of the Jewish traditions that Paul was innocent and accusations against him were based on no real evidence. The third reason why Jesus' trial was not fair was that Herod and the Pharisees were using the case to strengthen their political ties with Pilate. This comes from an important statement made in Luke's record of the event. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together, 
for before they were at enmity between themselves. That's Luke chapter 23 verse 12. See also Acts chapter 4 verse 27. Herod and other Jewish leaders wanted to take advantage of Jesus' trial to prove to Pilate that they were loyal to his authority. And Pilate used this to strengthen the Jews' faith in his leadership. Politics is not supposed to be involved in justice, but in Christ's case, it was. For these three reasons, Jesus did not get a fair trial. But there's a little bit more to this that I think we should consider. Although Jesus did die unjustly, it was through that unjust death and God's infinite mercy and love that we now have a chance of living forever. I'll point out here that God's intention when sending Jesus to this world was not for him to suffer and die, but rather for him to live among men and be an example of how he wants his children to live. That's why the book of Hebrews called Jesus the express image of God in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. However, due to the fact that those running the show in Judea were not righteous people, a godly man like Jesus became a threat to their influence rather than a blessing, and so they killed him. In his infinite love though, God decided to turn that event into something nice for us by using that death to atone for the original sin committed by man in the Garden of Eden according to 1 John chapter 4, verses 9-11, to 11, and Romans chapter 3, verses 22-26. to 26. He could do so because Christ was a perfect soul till death, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. And so just as it was done in ancient Israel using clean lambs and goats, according to Leviticus chapter 22, verses 18-24, to 24, Christ was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and his death became the guarantee of eternal life for those who would serve God faithfully across all generations. Christ knew that that was a part of the mission, which was why he didn't defend himself in court or try to convince Pilate that he was innocent. So I think that is where I will stop on talking about whether Jesus got a fair trial or not. He did not get a fair trial because the Pharisees used false witnesses to accuse him. Pontius Pilate was not impartial in his judgment and the Jews wanted to use this case to strengthen their political ties with Pilate. If you enjoyed this video and liked the way I explained things, then you can hit the like button and click the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And also click the notification bell to be notified when we come back with new videos just like this. And if you agree with my statements or don't agree with my statements, then put it in the comment section below. If you think that Jesus did get a fair trial, then you can you know, talk about why in the comment section. And also, if you have any other reasons why you think Jesus did not or did get a fair trial, then tell us about it so that we can start a very interesting spiritual discussion. Regardless of which direction they go, they're beneficial nonetheless. Anyway, have a good day and God bless you.